wicking mats, AKA self-watering mats, capillary mats, look like this mats. That's what we're gonna talk about today. I'm gonna to show you one that I have that's on its third year of use and kind of what it looks like after three years versus what a new one looks like and the pros, the cons, what you need to know, et cetera and so forth. So what this is doing, the mat is doing, is it's playing off of capillary action, which is adhesive and cohesive factors, kind of pulling the water up against gravity. The smaller your pore space is, the more water that that can be uptaken against gravity. If you are using a potting soil instead of a seed starting mixture, for example, and you have a lot of perlite or chunky bark stuff in there, it's not as likely or it's not as good. It will still to a degree pull the water up, but the best choice would be a seedling mix or something that has smaller perlite and or no perlite at all. That is what seed starting mixes have. If you're gonna go this route, you do wanna consider kind of the soil you're using. You wanna pack the soil into the cell and make it nice and firm. I'll do a seed starting video because actually packing the cell just in general is a really good idea for proper root development. So you do wanna take that into consideration when going this route. When it comes to pros of the mat itself, Pro number one is the fact that it is a continual supply of moisture and nutrients. This will allow you to put fertilizer into your water and that fertilizer will be uptaken by the plant via the water. Now I continually say this, it's important to fertilize in my opinion, every single time you water your seedlings because you have such small little reservoirs for nutrients potting soil, particular seed starting mixes, they don't have much in the way of microbial activity and therefore there's not a lot of nutrient cycling going on so you're kind of limited to what's in that little block to begin with. And a lot of issues you see in adult plants, blossom and rot, uh, deformities, calcium, magnesium issues, iron issues, they actually all start at the seedling stage because some of them are not mobile in the plant or not as mobile in the plant. So because of that, we tend to see these issues creep up later on. And the best way to counter that is via a fertilizer that is sucked up via the capillary mass. Other than the constant fertilizer supply, we also have the constant water supply, which again limits the amount of issues we can see in the seedlings when they grow up along with a constant water supply reduces the, the chances of wilting. And while wilting seems like nothing when the plant does it, it actually heavily affects the plant both in that moment and later on. So one way to avoid that is via the capillary mass. And again, constant water supply is difficult when you have the smaller cells. Now you're probably thinking, well, why would I not just do the bottom watering tray method? And while this works and I do it all the time, there is a slight risk of more mold, more dampening off. There's a higher risk of root rot if you're not doing it correctly, that sort of thing. So if you're new and you've experienced a lot of seedling loss and dampening off, which is just simply just seeds just not, seedlings not doing well, skip the bottom watering and go to the mat side of things because that little bit of extra air space both in the mat and you know the, just the interface between the container and the mat, that can actually alleviate a lot of the issues you see related to excessive levels of water. Now the cons of this is that the mat itself can become incredibly dirty. Um, it can get incredibly salty and gross. So here is my disgusting mat. Uh, by the way, I'm a horrible influencer. Nothing I show you is like at all professional. I don't clean anything up. You just get raw footage of my life. And here's the mat. So this one is three years old and the, it's stuck to the platform, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. It's not supposed to be stuck to this platform. It just is stuck to this platform. And you can see salt builds up. You can see uh, stuff on the bottom. I don't even know what that looks like mold, which it probably is. You can see roots in there. She's just gross. So there is some salt buildup, but we'll discuss how to get rid of that here in a little bit. The other con is if you're not continually removing the container and rotating them or switching them around, your roots can and will attach to the mat 
and grow into the mat. And then you're physically going to have to rip your container off and destroy your roots, which I mean, to an extent is maybe not a bad thing because it actually increases more roots. However, it's a little uh, cringy to do. So that's definitely something to consider is that the roots will work into this mat. There's nothing saying they can't. Roots are incredibly powerful. They will go through rock. They sure as heck are gonna go through a wicking mat. And the last con is the actual physical setup. And this is probably the biggest barrier to entry for me. While this mat is disgusting, and definitely, see look, there's a root, it's stuck in there. What has to happen for these to work is you do need to have uh, the mat in the water. And so this is on a platform. You can see it's a raised platform and the actual container it's in, but it's got like a dish in the bottom that holds water and this platform, it sits on it and just this edge kind of sits in the water itself and it moves up into the mat. To make this happen, I don't quite understand how it's, unless you got a big space <laughs> with like a very shallow kind of dish type thing going on, I, that's difficult to do. There also is to take into consideration while the wicking mats wick, and they do go against gravity, don't get me wrong. You can't have a seed starting setup that's, you know, four or five feet tall and a bucket of water on the ground, because it won't make that jump. So you do need whatever your water containing vessel is that your wicking mat is attached to, you need that level or relatively level with the platform it's on, or you need it to be downhill from that. You don't need much. You don't need much of this cloth in there. You can just put like a little tail into the bucket. It doesn't have to be the whole edge of the mat by any stretch of the imagination, but the setup itself, you have to put some thought into it. However, if you're able to manage the setup, if you're able to get all this done, um, and it looked good. It is incredibly easy to deal with. As for the salts and the mold built up on this thing, all you gotta do is put it in the sink. Put it in the sink with like a tiny little bit of bleach if you wanted. I would prefer you don't use detergent. If you do, you do, it's fine. I would go for more of like a, a Castile soap, like something more natural soap wise. I literally just like hand wash it and you should be good. I wouldn't put it, you, I mean, you could maybe put it in a washing machine. I don't think it's gonna come out very nice after. Don't put it in a dryer, but uh, yeah, you can definitely just hand wash these. They get gross though. So they won't look like, and this, this gross, it happens fast. Like this won't look like this month within months it's gonna look like junk so it's not gonna stay pretty forever if you want to learn more on what sort of lighting you need to use with your seedlings and how you can actually intensify said lighting using tin foil mirrors or white paint you want to check out this video right here and that video down there is what google's ai says you should watch and there are overlords so they know what they're talking about i'll talk to you guys next time bye